Hi. During the Middle Ages, the Mass, that is the celebration of Holy Communion, was done in Latin. And when the priest said the words of institution, particularly that about the body of Christ, his words were hoc est corpus meum. Translated, that is, this is my body. The people that attended the Mass, by and large, did not know Latin. They heard the Mass in Latin and didn't understand what was happening. And so a, uh, what do we call it? A myth, perhaps we could say, grew up around those words. There, there was a sense that in this event, this holy act, there was some kind of magic happening. Uh, one of the things that Luther uh, spoke about against the Roman Church was the misunderstanding of this holy act. Misunderstanding of sacraments in general, most deeply misunderstanding of scripture and its relationship to the gospel. Among those was the idea that there was some kind of magic that happened in the Mass. The term hocus pocus comes from that misunderstanding. That the people heard hoc est corpus meum and created this phrase hocus pocus that we today understand as an incantation of magic. Unfortunately, that same kind of sentiment continues, or maybe not so much continues, but has come back into contemporary society today, particularly around the larger uh, gathering of those that consider themselves Christians or Lutherans. Uh, and, it, and it's something that I want to address today. And it, specifically as we look at how we actually use the sacraments of baptism and Holy Communion. Paul, in his letter to the Romans, says to us that the righteous will live by faith. And his whole letter to the Romans is really centered around this discussion of the essential nature of faith. Now we want to remind ourselves that faith is not something that we have within ourselves. Faith is not something that we're born with, that we can nurture, or that, or something that we can drum up from within ourselves, but that it it's, itself is a gift that God gives to us. Faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the Word of Christ. But faith is absolutely essential in our understandings of baptism and Holy Communion. There is this misunderstanding about baptism, and Holy Communion too, but I think primarily about baptism, that in some way, you know, if I've been baptized, I am safe. Uh, baptism isn't a magic amulet. It, it isn't hocus pocus. It is an act in which God comes to us, but also an act in which we live in, in faith. In order for baptism to continue to be effective in our lives, that is, our side of the covenant. Now, God doesn't, doesn't ever break His side of the covenant. If we wander from the covenant, then He welcomes us back when we come in repentance. But we believe that we can wander from the covenant. Paul warned Timothy about two men, he names them, who had made shipwreck of their faith. He also mentions that in the last days, men would deny the faith, would walk away from the faith. And so this is maybe the, the first place where, where we need to come to this understanding that in Lutheran theology and confessional Biblical Lutheran theology, we believe that it is possible for a person to lose their salvation. 
we believe that we receive that gift in baptism, but that unless we continue to live in baptism, Luther used the, the phrase that we ought to walk wet. We talk about a life of daily repentance, that baptism is effective in our lives long term for our whole lives when in faith we walk in the covenant that God made with us in baptism. Now again, this is not something that we can do on our own. We don't have the power to do this. I believe that I cannot by my own reason or strength it is part of our confession as we explain the third article of the Apostles' Creed. But that goes on to say that the Holy Spirit is active. The Holy Spirit calls me by the gospel, but it is also the Holy Spirit who holds me to the gospel, that keeps me in the true faith. So there's this tension that exists there, and, and we are willing to live in this tension. The tension between the fact that faith is a gift that God gives to us, that even staying in the faith is something the Holy Spirit has to do in us, and yet that faith is absolutely essential for salvation. That faith is absolutely essential for the covenant that God makes with us in baptism to be effective our whole lives and into eternity. So if we deny the faith, if we walk away from the faith, then the covenant from our side is broken. And the effect is that we lose our salvation. The same is true with the Lord's Supper. When we come to the altar, when we come to the altar rail, when we come to eat and drink, we need to come believing. We need to come in faith that Jesus' words are true. In faith, believing that when he says, this is my body, we are receiving his body. That when he says, this is my blood, we are receiving his blood. That when he says, poured out for the forgiveness of sins, that he is forgiving our sins. Now we can come, but if we come without faith, then I believe, as it seems very clear, Paul spoke to the Corinthians that it's dangerous. As a matter of fact, Paul's conclusion about illnesses and even death that was happening, happening among the believers in Corinth was a result of their not coming properly, not having examined themselves, not properly discerning the body, coming to the altar, thinking that it was magic, maybe, not fully believing what God did there. And, and so if we come to the altar, without faith, just because everybody else in the congregation is doing it. Or if we come to the altar, you know, whatever reason, apart from faith, it's dangerous. Because we are dealing with the power of God. And we're dealing with the mystery that God comes to us in bread and wine. So faith... The righteous will live by faith, by believing, by trusting. And, and we're willing to live in the tension that faith is a gift that God gives to us, that without God giving us that gift, we can't have it. And yet, that it is absolutely essential, necessary, that it is exercised in our lives. Think of it as a gift. We've talked about gifts in, in different ways, but think of it this way. We like to receive gifts, and maybe Christmas is the time when gifts are our most common, Christmas or birthdays. And, and usually a gift is wrapped in a package. Uh, Christmas time, probably put under the tree. At a birthday, just hand it to us to open up after we have our, Christmas, or our birthday meal. The question is, of what value is the gift if it's never opened? We can receive the gift and just leave it under the tree. And yeah, it's pretty. Nice decoration, maybe. But of what value is it? And I think that in a similar way, we can understand the gift of faith. 
that unless the gift of faith is exercised, what value does it have in our lives? So, I just wanted to uh, clarify these two pieces, uh, this understanding about these two sacraments, that just because a person is baptized does not mean that person continues to be saved. Because that person could walk away, could deny the faith. Just because a person comes to the altar, the altar rail, to receive the sacrament of the altar, does not mean that that person's sins are forgiven. Because both require faith. Now, you know, we've talked about children coming to baptism. Our, we bring our children to God in baptism, in faith, believing that He makes a covenant with them. And then as we grow, we come to an understanding of what happened to us in baptism. I am absolutely and fully convinced that I was saved when I was baptized. I didn't understand it at the time. I had to come to a full understanding of that. And I think I was probably five the first time when I you know, uh, consciously acknowledged what God had done for me. And, and as I've grown older and come more fully to understand Scripture, I am more and more appreciative of what my parents did in faith, bringing me to God, that He would give me the gift of faith, that I would continue to live in that gift, daily repentance, remembering my baptism, walking wet, as it were, remembering the covenant that God has made with me, and then celebrating that covenant as I come to the altar to eat and drink for the forgiveness of sins because of faith. Thank you for listening. God bless you.